the central livestock market in Yoki, Kagoshima Prefecture. In this market, calves up to eight months old are sold at auction. But these years, people involved in the production of Japanese beef have much to worry about. It's true that calves are very expensive. These calves used to come from so-called breeding farms, where elderly people raised them as if they were their own grandchildren. Many people were raising two or three calves on their farms at any time. But, you know, now these farmers are getting old and quitting. And so the number of cows keep dropping. At the same time, breeding Japanese beef cattle is a complex skill. There are many aspects of it that you can't easily scale or commercialize. It depends on what the market is like, but prices have been rising especially fast in the last two or three years. The result is that beef gets more expensive. Beef is becoming something that's out of reach for consumers. That's a big problem. In 15 years, the price of a Japanese black calf has increased by a factor of 2.6. This steep price rise has enormous consequences, not just for consumers who buy beef, but also for the farmers who raise the cattle. And there are more problems for the farmers. A steep rise in the price of imported cattle feed, a lack of successors, and a drop in the working population. On top of this, the TPP may result in an increase in cheap meat imports. Japanese agriculture stands at an important crossroads. Minami Satsuma in Kagoshima Prefecture. On a large plot in a valley, the Kinko Farm raises cattle. The Kinko Farm has 60 other farms on the island of Kyushu and about 18,000 cows in total. What sets this farm apart is its integrated system. Everything happens on the farm, from growing feed to breeding and fattening the cows. Kinko Farm also holds an ISO 22000 certificate which is an international food safety qualification. The farm represents a next generation style of agriculture and all of Japan is watching. The operator of the Kinko farm is Kamichiku, which is headquartered in Kagoshima. Kamichiku controls an integrated operation that includes everything from producing fodder for its cows to breeding and raising them, processing and selling the beef and even running restaurants. This way of operating a business is called six-dimensional industry. The system is gaining traction as the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries pushes for farms to adopt it. It involves integrating everything from production to sales and also fostering industrial innovations that make good use of local resources. Six-dimensional industry is an attempt to revitalize agriculture by encouraging primary industry companies to expand their business operation into food processing, distribution and sales. By operating in an independent and comprehensive manner, farmers can obtain value from second and third dimensions. They can gain even more added value by developing new business models that involve branding agriculture products, selling directly to consumers and running restaurants. Why has Kamichiku adopted the six-dimensional system? First of all, we want to survive. We can't do that if we keep doing agriculture like we did before. We can't survive if we don't operate our business more cheaply, if we don't add value. To get there, we've had to look at everything, producing the feed, raising the cows, processing the meat, adding value to it, and selling it. The other big wholesale meat sellers, our competitors, they're all big companies. It was incredibly important that we managed to convey that we're not a big company but a wholesale seller of meat that farmers have really poured their hearts and souls into. That's what makes us different. Aso in Kumamoto Prefecture. These enormous paddy fields are where Kamichiku cultivates rice plants to feed its cows. By doing joint research and development together with the farmers, Kamichiku can figure out what kind of rice plants grown in these paddies are best for raising high-quality cows. 
What's great about Kamichiku is that they work with universities and such. They get specialists from universities to do things, like analyze the feed, decide when the best time is to harvest the plants, when the plants are at their most nutritious. They look at things in a proper lab, work with lots of different places, do a scientific analysis before they place an order with us. They say, please harvest now, or they divide things up according to what the research says they need and say things like, get us some plants with lots of nutrients because it's going to a dairy farm. Or, this is for fattening the cows up so you can send it later. And we send only what they need. It makes dealing with them really easy. That's what we're all happiest about. There's never any money-related mistakes. They buy what they ask for, always. The people from Kamichiku are really careful and keeping their promises. Kamichiku's TMR center in Minami Satsuma, Kagoshima Prefecture. Here is where Kamichiku produces feed for its cows. Producing feed is the biggest expense of any breeding farm. By producing its own feed, Kamichiku tries to bring stability to farm management. Feed is the most important aspect of raising a cow, and also the most expensive. At our company, we bring in Japanese feed, and we also make good use of byproducts from nearby businesses to bring costs down as much as possible. Having that system inside our company lets us do things more cheaply and comprehensively. Also, what brings our cost down the most is that we make good use of abandoned rice paddies and such. Kamichiku breeds, nurses, rears, and fattens its own cows. The company's greatest strength is that it can create the kind of beef that the customer wants. The quality of meat depends a lot on the environment. On top of that, no matter how good the cow, it won't respond the way you want if you don't take care of it. You'll end up with meat that's nothing like what customers want. So we work hard, day and night. Health checks are still so important. A cow can't speak, but if it has a health problem and you don't discover it quickly, if you don't make it better, you won't have a good cow in the end. The highest grade beef that can come from a cow is grade A412. Everyone wants to raise that kind of cow, but getting to 12 is really hard. When you do manage against all the odds, that's like a dream come true for any cattle breeder. You just want to punch the air. It makes everyone do their very best. What is special about the breeding method used by Kamichiku is the integrated beef and dairy system. A Holstein cow is inseminated with fertilized eggs from a Japanese beef cow and gives birth to the calf. That lowers the cost of producing the calf. It also lets Kamichiku make dairy products from the cow's milk and sell them. That increases the revenue the company can make and brings costs down even more. From slaughter to packaging, Kamichiku can do it all in its meat processing center in Kagoshima. Meat is processed into products tailored towards customers' needs, then shipped, undergoing rigorous quality control at every step of the process. Thanks to its use of the six-dimensional system, Kamichiku has a system in place to produce not just beef, but also other products that consumers want, from kimchi to beef croquettes and beef stew. These products are sold not just through wholesale retailers and restaurants, but also through Kamichiku operated stores that sell directly to customers. We get our stock directly from Kamichiku. We place a premium on safety and security, and we can offer Kamichiku products to our customers with confidence. That's the biggest advantage for us. We also get to hear what customers really think about the products, so we can send that feedback on to Kamichiku. Hearing what customers really think will help us improve our service, so this is also very important. A restaurant operated by Kamichiku. Day after day, the restaurant is full of customers who come to enjoy high-quality beef straight from the farm. Inside Kamichiku's six-dimensional system, in which the company controls everything from breeding and raising cows to processing and selling the meat, this is the home stretch of a race that began with the producers. I feel that our strength really lies in the fact that we can take something we made completely inside our company, in a primary industry, and put it straight on the customer's table. We can tell our customers not only exactly where their meat was made, but also exactly who made it, 
We could say, today you're eating this or that person's cow. I think that to our customers, the fact that we can say that expresses that our products are trustworthy and they have added value. Of course, our customers also tell us things like, today's meat was really good, or the fat was good, or the tallow was fresh and tasty. Thanks to this feedback, which we send on to the producers at fixed intervals, we know exactly what customers want when we produce our next cows. I feel that's our biggest strength. Japanese agriculture has focused on making quality products first, and made enormous progress with that approach. I'm convinced that prioritizing quality wasn't a mistake. But I also think people didn't focus enough on how to deliver that quality more cheaply. All farmers now compete with the rest of the world, whether they're producing vegetables, fruit or livestock. If we make good use of Japan's technological prowess, I think we can stand an excellent chance. I was born and raised on a livestock farm. Every day of my life was an opportunity to experience all the hardships a farming family can experience. Then I made kamichiku. With all the progress we've made, I've reached an age where I feel more and more strongly that we have a mission. I want to use beef to put smiles on the faces of people all over the world, to cheer them up. That means not just consumers, but also farmers and everyone who works with me in some way or another. I want to see them all smiling, cheerful and happy. I believe this is our mission. Japanese agriculture stands at an important crossroads. But that is also a great opportunity for agriculture. The times are changing. Japanese agriculture can turn these changes into opportunities, instead of clinging to established values and farming styles. By continuing to evolve, Japanese agriculture can find answers that give hope to the future.